Good evening traders. Today is March 14th and actually tomorrow I will not be doing a morning session because I have a lot of errands and appointments to attend to but I'm going to try to tweet as much as I can or follow the markets as much as I can intraday but I think it's going to be kind of spotty it just depends on what's going on so in light of that what you're looking at is important levels to work to look for tomorrow focus in this area right here okay so these numbers you see here I've enumerated them right here I would focus on this as major resistance levels because in light of CPI numbers we have reason to suspect PPI will also cause a big move up but that remains to be seen all right, so having said all that, we had one hell of a day. Actually, some of you may be surprised. I did not get a single call today. I only got puts. Actually, I did not get any calls. That includes that morning run, and it includes that end of day 30 minute run right there. So let's get into it. At opening bell basically I just said I think it looks like it's going for that 392 wedge top and that would have been right here right there yes sir yes indeed that's what it went for by golly all right so which by the way that wedge top was what it was going for Monday night when I predicted you know what I think it's gonna come up there it's going to hit that top and then it's going to tumble. That's exactly what it did overnight. But I thought it was going to happen in the morning. So we revisited that top. And it comes, it turns out that top will ultimately be the resistance. So we are still in the wedge. And as of tonight, futures is kind of messing around by that top again. So I'm not sure what they're scheming. I'm not quite sure yet. But I can tell you that futures right now looks calm no bearish divergence and it's kind of float well this is extended hours earlier but it's kind of doing this it's just kind of floating floating float I think that SMA 20 and the EMA 50 is curling up it's gonna force it into a wedge tomorrow morning yeah I don't know uh, we'll see we'll have to see but I highly doubt it's gonna take that wedge top tonight I'd be surprised if it did because there's no reason to do it uh yeah unless you're planning on going up and then taking it down in the morning okay so nonetheless that's where we are okay soon as oh actually uh this would have been right here actually this this yeah yep something like that i went ahead and got puts at 391.85 ish i got puts 391 yeah, that was right here. Okay, I was like, man, this thing, because I knew that wedge top was was also nearby, right? Right, right there. There's there's a wedge top, and I knew this blue channel was right there. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm getting some, I'm getting some shorts right here. But now we know it just kept on going up. Okay, <clears throat> but you'll see how the, the play was called in a little bit. So, oh uh, yeah, here's the blue line. Here's the well, it was dancing around yeah <clears throat> I mean it was dancing around right in here at the time right of course the, the, the candles ended up changing and then I was also wondering is this thing gonna make it like a double top what's going on here okay yes 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 at the time see look at that at the time so um it was respecting the wedge top as it was flush right I mean it was just respecting it that's how you know that's how you know the markets the market makers are respecting these lines completely completely respecting these lines as you see wicks down wick down right come up flush starting another candle flush that's how you know 100% 100% they're respecting these lines 
So you got to draw them in. Otherwise, you have no idea. If you don't draw any of these lines in, you have you are totally fighting the enemy blind. Totally blind. You have no idea when that thing is going to reverse on you with whatever. You have no idea what to anticipate, like what's coming around the corner. No idea. You have to draw these lines in because 100% the market maker is respecting it. Because if you think about it, that's what algorithms do. Algorithms don't just randomly decide to re, re, uh, re randomly decide to wick down right here, wick down right here, go flush exactly with it right there, right? It just doesn't do that. But you write programs have to have a reference point. It's like, well, tell me when to when to start the open price and and finish the closing price of that candle. Tell me when. Tell me where. How to how to do it. Okay, that's just the way it is, guys. Last Friday's high was three ninety three eighty. As I was drawing that out, here from here to here, oh three ninety three eighty. Oh, I don't have it here. I did at the time. I had a pink line in there. I must have took it out. It's on a different chart. Three ninety three eighty. There was a pink line <laughs> that it never reached. Okay, it did not reach 393.80. It, it would have been like right up here, right up there. That's how you knew that's a lower high. If it took 393.80, let's just pretend it took it right here. It actually eclipsed 393. It's let's say it closed it. It wicked. It wicked at 393.81. Ooh. That's a higher high from last Friday. Now you have a trend change. Now you have a higher high from three days ago. Okay, but it did not take it, and that's all there is to it. Okay, so okay, okay, okay. Where are we at? Where are we at? Yeah, oh yeah. It, it it came down and then it came back up again. Okay, 39380 pink line. Oh, okay, yeah. At the at the time I had it right here. See that 3390380 right there. Oh, it almost got there. I was tracking to it. I'm like, uh-huh. Where where are you going? Where are you going? Are you going to take this line? So, that's 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 what I was tracking to. Aha. Uh -huh. So, <clears throat> it is important to now know at this point now the back of the MACD shows bearish divergence. That was the first crack in the armor. It's like, oh, here we go, here we go. If the MACD does not curl up uh, and positive cross the signal line, meaning this red line curls up positively crossing the, the, the green signal line, if it does not curl up, she's going down. And what happened? It never did curl back up. I would have that that would have been this point right here, right there that I sent that tweet. Oh wait a second. Oh no, sorry, 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 sorry. It was actually right here. <laughs> it's it's interesting how the the MACD. Oh, that's why. Oh, this is the fifteen minute chart. Oops. That's why. That's why the 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 MACD shape. On this doesn't look like this because this is a 15 minute. I just now noticed that. Oh well, close enough. Okay, at least you have the visual right here though. Okay, a bearish divergence MACD starting to curl down, scaling more puts. So, right, <laughs> it would have been right here, right there. That I started getting puts equivalent to equivalent to. Okay, so basically, I got in at the top. Well, I got in a little bit earlier. I got in uh, uh, right, he right here. I got in a little earlier. I watched it go up, but as soon as I saw, as soon as I saw bearish divergence right here, see that bearish divergence. This is coming under the signal line, and now that's curling down, even though that's going up. Bearish divergence. Got more puts. I got it at the top. Sorry, not sorry. 
So, 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 ha, ha, ha. This is the scenario. Initially, it failed to backtest this wedge top. See that? Came up, failed. Came up a second time, found resistance at 393.50, and then we now know it failed that too. It failed and came back. So it actually poked its head up above the wedge, only to fail back down through it. Okay? Wedge top. It was sandwiched in between 393.80. Oh, oh yeah, it was, it was sandwiched in between the pink line, 393.80, and the wedge top. Could not overcome it. Could not make a higher high. That is the idea of looking left. Anytime the markets are head up, head up, head up, head up, head up, the first thing you need to do is start looking left. Where is it possibly going towards? Always look towards the previous trading day's highs, and that gives you a, an, an idea of where it's trying to go in comparison to previous days. Is it trying to make a higher high, or is it trying to make a lower high? Today we know that. Confirmed, it is under the pink line from last Friday, 393.80, lower high. It is not going to make a trend change today. That's how you know. Okay, ah, I wish I would have caught this and turned to the five minute, but oh well. Because right there, here's the five minute that I, that I tweeted. Watch for whether the SMA 20 now becomes resistance, meaning this is the gray line. Does it become resistance, meaning up, rejection down, or if it consolidates under the SMA 20, which is bullish. The MACD is curling down further. See that? Uh oh. That's not a good sign. That's usually that's usually confirmation. Oh yeah. You're going down. Okay, very interesting. Here's the red line. This is the one hour EMA 50. Coincided exactly with the five minute EMA 50 right there. Um, on here, unfortunately, I actually no, I actually it, uh, it uh, moved this. This is the one hour EMA 50. It was right here, but I had to move it out of the way to rearrange some lines, but then I forgot to move it back. But it was right equal to the uh, the five minute EMA 50 right here, as you saw in the tweet at the time. Okay. We're back testing both. So for you existing listeners, you guys know these two, the one hour, I'm not the five minute EMA 50 and the one hour EMA 50. I use only these two intraday. I don't use any other time frames. Like 98% of my reference points are either the five minute or the one hour. That's it. I don't mess around with other time frames. I mean, I, I do, I glance occasionally in case I'm just kind of curious. I'm like, oh, let me, let's, let's skip on over to the four hour. Check that out or something like that, you know. But that, that's just every once in a while. But I strictly rely on the five minute and the one hour to tell me what's going on. That one hour is so informational in so many ways. So many ways. You're going to see me reference 65 minute. Oh, here we go. Uh, for example, yeah, here we go, 65 minute chart, same as one hour. But remember, I did a previous comparison. Huge difference between a 60 minute chart and a 65 minute chart. Those candles aren't even remotely similar. They aren't even remotely similar. So it behooves you if your platform allows you to, you need to track to the 65 minute chart. Because if you track to the 60 minute chart, you actually have a half candle. And that totally throws off the look. Totally. But when you have a 65 minute chart, you have full candles throughout the day. Full candles throughout the day. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is just me. This is just me commenting. I'm like, you guys, <laughs> you've had five consecutive 65 minute green candles. Actually, one, two, three, four, five. 
actually it could have been six. this is technically six but I started counting here one two three four five five 65 minute green candles okay you you got to come down you have to come down and since this is the 65 minute chart look look at how high it went above the, the one hour EMA 50 line too high you have to come down that's just the way it works that's just the laws of trading gravity okay back test to 390.19 right here here's the 390.19 okay so laws of trading okay 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 yes I've seen this before see that right there right here right here's what I'm talking about in this tweet seen this before almost but not quite touched the EMA 50 it's almost like but but if you don't even have the EMA 50 charted you would have had no idea you'd have had no idea that actually it's cheating you you are being cheated if you don't chart the 5 minute EMA 50 see look what I say almost but not quite touch the EMA 50 it'll come back down and touch it always does 100% it's gonna touch it <laughs> because I ah, wish I would uh, oh once again oh you'll see other uh, you'll see other charts here we go here we go yeah come on down you're the next contestant on the EMA 50 is right come on down you guys know that that show on the in the 80s okay the price is right now let's see how the back test goes. Okay, see, so earlier it almost touched it, cheating you. Came back, it came back, came back up. Actually, as soon as I saw that and it started going up, I'm like, "Oh, you're coming back down! I guarantee it." And yes, you did. Big red candle right there. And we all know, but we got worse than that. <laughs> okay, at this point, kind of hard to see, but the MACD is now below the zero line. See now you now you're now you're now you're just banging on top of the EMA fifty right here. Okay. Notice I say now I'm starting to call this out intraday because it is important. Important. In two minutes, the sixty-five minute red candle closes. A move is coming soon. It's coming soon. Okay, so the EMA 50 straddled. It actually closed the candle body at 391.49. EMA 50 was 391.50. 49 versus 50. Uh oh, straddling. Scale more puts. So I got puts up there. Actually, I got it like right here. I got it up there. I got it right there. I'm just putting it up. Here we go. So earlier when I said a move is coming and boy did it come. Boom boom boom. We all know it got a lot worse. <laughs> it got a lot worse than that too. So is it a great to be able to anticipate when a move is coming? It's not that I can say unequivocally it's gonna go up or down, but I can tell you a move is coming when that sixty five minute candle closes and I can look and see well where are you what are you doing at that moment what is the orientation of the, the of the chart pattern at that moment when the 65 candle minute candle closes and I can tell you if, if it's like eh, it looks kind of bearish or bullish basically what I'm saying is if you're already monitoring the price relative to the EMA and SMA and relative to the channel lines and if it's already looking bearish as soon as that 65 minute candle closes very soon after that's when you get the flush the flush down the move down as you see here this is the move the move the move it's like oh yeah you're going down that 65 minute candle closed now you're going down okay 
when it got all the way down, well, let's see here. What was this? 389 ish, 380, 388.60. That would have been like right here ish. Yep. Yeah, right around there. Yeah, that's about right. That's when I got out. 388.60. Yeah, right, right around here. Something like that. Whatever. Not a bad day. So. Oh, 387.84 is approximately where the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement is. 387.84. Yep, 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 yep. Right here at this gray line. So, yeah, 61.8 Fib retracement between the top and this low. So, top and that low. 61%. Okay? 61.8. Paper trading only. Right here. Wait, 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 wait. No, it's right here. It would have been right here. This this candle right here. I was paper trading only. Look for this one to fail and still go down to 387.84. Ha ha ha. So, it pivoted. 389 ish, 389 right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right here, right here. It pivoted back up, but I said, nah. Look for this one to fail and still go down to 387.84, which it ultimately did right there. So, you want to know how I knew that? Of course, I don't have the. I don't have that screenshot right now. And this is the, <laughs> the 15 minute is not precise enough. Um, at this moment, when it was going down, the MACD was also in neutral convergence following the price. So the MACD was also going down like this. And so the MACD just started to curl up with this green candle. For, for me to know that it's actually at the bottom, it has to it has to not only curl up, but also create the, complete that higher low notch on the MACD. It was just now starting to curl up, let alone it didn't even have a notch. That's how I knew you're still going to go down further. Okay, seven, in seven minutes, here we go again. In seven minutes, the 65 minute candle closes. And if it closes straddling below 390.26, which is... Where are you? Right, like right here. It would have been like, ah. Well, I do have the can right there. Yeah, 390.26 is right there. At the time, this was the one hour EMA. See that? Right there. If it closes straddling below 390.26, at, at this moment, it was below because the price was right here. It was a 389.70. More down we go because that 65 minute candle straddling below 390.26, which is the one which is the 65 minute EMA 50, you're failing the back test on the 65 minute chart. More down we go. How'd that work out? Yep. Haha. <laughs> as soon as that 65 minute candle closed, flush went down move was coming. You can actually time those flush moves according to when the 65 minute candle closes. You can time it actually. You can say there's going to be a move coming guys. <laughs> Watch out. Okay. So um, okay. I, I, actually I, I, I scaled out earlier and I, and I got back in. I got back in um, when I saw the flush, because it, it it ended up going actually down below <laughs> below three eighty seven eighty four, which is down here, right down here. Okay, so the MACD has not made a higher low notch to show the bottom. Okay, so um, see, actually, it tried to make a move back up like this, but. Because the MACD didn't even try to make a higher, uh, a higher low, so that would have been equivalent to this right here. Yeah, 
right, like this right here, this this area right here. Um, <laughs> here we go again. The 65 minute candle closes in one minute. A move is coming soon. So that would have been right here, right here. And guess what? Down you go. After the 65 minute candle closed, down you went. I changed my mind. I scalped out of my puts. I am not holding overnight. Right there. Look at that low. That was literally right, <laughs> right here. I changed my mind and I got out. So I bought at the top and I sold at the bottom. The bottom. Why? Because I don't want PPI tomorrow to reverse on me. Well, come to find out, I didn't have to wait for PPI tomorrow. Because what happened after I sold that put? Whoop! <laughs> it went off. <laughs> so, but I did not get that. I didn't get calls because I did not expect, honestly, this kind of move. I did not expect that. I thought, well, you might get a little one like that, you know, a, l a little pop. But this totally exceeded my expectation. I was like, what? You damn near went up to the to the channel top again. So that one that one took me by surprise. Ah, no, I didn't expect that. Okay. So here's the summary. Today was a short squeeze. That makes two consecutive higher lows. Two consecutive higher lows. I anticipate more of this type of action for this week. The day the EMA is taken back intraday, meaning and not lost the same day, meaning you took the EMA 50, you successfully back tested it, and you didn't lose it in the same day, that's when the market is ready to move up full stop. Because I'm going to show you a tweet where I called the trend change. I've called this in previous videos. I'm going to show you again. Here it is. Okay. Actually, it's the next slide. It's the next slide. That's okay. What is happening today is exactly, exactly what happened in late December, early January. They short squeeze their way out of the wedge. They squeezed it, they pumped it in overnight futures or in the morning. And when you do that, you dump it during the day, but the dump during the day was a higher low than the previous day. That's exactly what they're doing now. Exactly the same play. And as I showed you in the previous episode, it is the, almost the exact same look as late December, early January. They are doing it again. They are short squeezing <clears throat> their way out of this rut that they manufactured intentionally, taking it down to SPY 383. Okay, so. Let's go to, okay, yeah, so I, I tweeted this. My definition of a trend change is when you reclaim and backtest EMA 50 in the same day. In the last 30 minutes of today, it did reclaim EMA 50, but no backtest. So it is inconclusive to say that we have a trend change. I'm going to err on the side of, no, we do not, because I didn't see that backtest. So we do not have a trend change yet. This leaves room for the market makers to continue to short squeeze without an official trend change. That is exactly what they did. In, just go back and look at the charts. Look at the overnight charts. Late December, early January. All right. Final slide. Here it was. The January 4th tweet. That's when I said, "Hey guys, uh, we have a we we, have, we might have an official trend change here, because right here, right there, 
January 4th, five minute chart. Guess what? You took it, you back tested it, and you went up. And you didn't lose it again that day. It was January 4th, right here, 10.01 a.m. I called it. Go back and look at the charts if you don't believe me. Look what happens on January 5th and 6th. Explosion to the upside and didn't look back. Explosion to the upside without the help of a short squeeze. It just took off. Okay? So that's my definition of a trend change. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter. But tomorrow might be a little bit spotty since I'm going to be running errands and such. Don't forget to listen to your favorite music while you're trading. It makes a difference in how you achieve your flow state. Please give this video a like, share, subscribe, or click to be notified when I release something new. With that, I'm Agent 00, signing off.